Hey Subfuries, this is part two of my Elder Scrolls lore series, where we talk about the history and mysteries of Tamriel. This video really follows on from my one on the Dawn era, where we talked about how the planet Nern, the Aedra, the Daedra, and briefly, Men and Mer came to be. You can click the link in the corner of the screen to watch that. So by the end of the last video, the Aedra had given up a lot of themselves and their power to create the realm of Mundus, the mortal realm. Some were actually so weak after creation that they had to become mortal and had to have children. These new mortals became the Elnafe, who would go on to become the races of men and Mer. Today we'll be talking about the Wars of the Elnafe. We won't have time to go too deeply into the origins of the Hist, the Beast Folk, the Argonians and Khajiit or other indigenous groups found across Tamriel, but there will be another video for them specifically. Now the Elnafe landed on Nern during the Dawn Era and divided into two groups not long after creation. One group called themselves the Old Elnafe and one group was called the Wandering Elnafe. Now the reason for them dividing is all in a whole lot of myth and legend, but there is some suggestion that there were once 12 worlds that during creation were destroyed, and Nern, the planet that they landed on, was created by forming the remnants of those 12 worlds into one. Now one large group of Elnafe landed on Nern relatively intact and were the ancestors of the Myrrh. They stuck together and kept their culture and magic and power. But lots of other Elnafe landed on Nern as well, and they were scattered amid the confused jumble of shattered worlds, wandering and finding each other over the years. Hence, they were called the Wandering Elnafe. So we have Nern, the Old Elnafe, and the Wandering Elnafe. Eventually, the Wandering find the Old, and the Old looked on them as degenerates, fallen from their former glory. And this really is the root of the hatred that a lot of Myr have for men. It's the idea that they were both descendants of the Et'ada, the original spirits, but men accepted their mortality. And that really set the tone of the relationship that men and Myr would share throughout history. We see it in the Talmor and the Aldemiri Dominion in Skyrim. Now, war eventually breaks out between these two groups of Elnafe, and though historians don't know precisely why, there are a number of theories. You see, at this point, Lorcan had not died, and in the varieties of faith in the Empire, this Lorcan figure, called Shaw here, takes sides with men after the creation of the world, and in the war that followed. In this war, the elves depict men as the aggressors, led by Lorcan. Uh, it says that the elves fought so that they might save the Aldemar from the hordes of men. Oriel could not save Altmora, the Elder would, and it was lost to men. The men, of course, depict elves as the aggressors, the ones wishing to avenge ourselves upon Lorcan and his allies. They also view the other gods as conspiring against Lorcan to bring about his destruction, making Lorcan a victim of their arrogance. Fundamentally though, the Wanderers celebrated Lorcan and creation, while the old Elnafe hated him. And this was clearly a large motivator for the war. A tip about history where sources can be biased or wrong, like in the Elder Scrolls, where both sides agree about something, it's far more likely to be true. Now, though everyone disagrees on who started the war, the elves say the men and the men say the elves, they all agree that Lorcan was a crucial player on the side of the wandering Elnafe. But what is interesting here is that there are also sources on both sides that depict Lorcan as a bloodthirsty warrior king. In the heart of the world, an elvish source by the way, on the old Elnafe, it says that they were chased south and east to old Elnafe, and Lorcan was close behind. He's depicted as a warmonger who made armies out of the weakest Elnafe and named them men. But in Shizar and the Divines, which is a source written by men, the Lorcan character is described as a bloodthirsty anti-Aldmer warlord of old. 
And in the Varieties of Faith, also written by men, men acknowledge that the older myths about Lorcan do depict him as a bloodthirsty warrior king who leads the Nords to victory over their old Mary oppressors time and again. So, Lorcan might be a hero to men, but it's also possible that he was a bloodthirsty hero nonetheless. It was only with a more cyrodiilic, later interpretation of that Lorcan figure in the myth that he really became a gentler, kinder version that a lot of men in the series tend to know. But even if Lorcan was defending men against their elvish oppressors, he does have another reason to attack the elves. They side with the gods who want to kill him. It's because of this that I do actually think that in the Wars of the Elnfei, it's more likely the Wandering Elnfei, or the men, that they were more likely to have started the war. They simply have more reason to, and historical sources do paint their leader as a fierce warrior, and we see that culture bleeding into the Nords of Skyrim. The wars of the Elnifei between the Wanderers and the Old supposedly raged across all of Nern. Now in these wars, the men were more numerous, but the Elves kept more of their magic. They were more powerful on average. Which, by the way, remained true throughout history. There aren't many accounts of how the wars of the Elnifei ended, and the ones we do have tend to be biased towards the Elves. The Heart of the World states that Trinimac, the champion of Auriel, knocked Lorcan down in front of his army and reached in with more than hands to take his heart. He was undone. Defeating the champion of men, Lorcan, supposedly ended the war. But Trinimac was also the Etada who hated Lorcan the most. Stories that paint him as a hero and Lorcan as a trickster or a traitor really have to be questioned. In fact, one book called The Changed Ones actually suggests that Trinimac was lying or deceiving when it came to what he said about Lorcan. Whatever happened, we know that the outcome of the Wars of the Elnifei were that the Wanderers, the men, lost and that Lorcan was taken by the other divines, and his heart was removed at a thing called the Convention, which we will talk about another time in more detail. Winning this war meant that the old Elnifei really kept their magic and society, that solidarity that kept them together at the beginning. Now, the old Elnifei would inevitably become the races of Myr that we know, the Ultima, Bosma, Dwema, Falma, Dalma, and so on. And there is some suggestion that the old Elnifei had already begun to split into these groups, most prominently the Kaima. The Monomyth talks about groups of Aldma who had already fallen, like the Kaima, who listened to tainted Edada, and others like the Bosma, who had soiled Time's line by taking mannish wives. And there are stories about Trinimac that suggest these groups uh, had already split off, like the Velothi dissident movement had already happened, or were happening around the time of these wars. But the timeline here is a little bit difficult to make out definitively. It's quite possible that the Wars of the Elnifei is just a more general title for the conflicts that existed between Men and Myr for a long time at the beginning. One final outcome of this war was that it formed the continents of Tamriel, Yokuda, Admora, and Akavir. Eldmeris did not exist, which we will talk about another time. Prior to this, Nern was actually just one huge landmass with a few seas here and there. No oceans like we see around Tamriel, and Elder Scrolls history does have a tendency to see land sinking beneath the ocean at various points. But somehow, these massive oceans were created during or by the Wars of the Elnifei, and these oceans left the different groups of men and Myr separated on different continents. While you mostly hear about men arriving from Admora and Yokota, there were actually a group of people who remained on Tamriel, called the Needs, after the Wars of the Elnifei. Most of these people died out across the ages, but they did exist in Blackmarsh, Cyrodiil, Hammerfell, and so on. So what happened? The Wars of the Elnifei were a war between the Wanderers, who became men, and the Old, who became Myr. It's unknown who started it, but Lorcan played a major role as possibly a warlord hero or a trickster. It raged across Nern and supposedly ended when Trinimac defeated Lorcan in battle, but we aren't sure if we can trust this. 
Finally, the Wanderers, the men, lost, and the Myr won, and it created the oceans and split the continents, leaving men and Myr in their separate lands. But that's all from me, Subfuries. I hope you enjoyed chapter two of this Elder Scrolls history lesson on the wars of the Alnafe and a little bit more about Lorcan. In the meantime, follow me on Twitter, Wattpad, Facebook, email me or send me stuff you've made at the links and address in the description below. Stay nerdy, Subfuries, and I'll see you in the future.